On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about some of the most effective ways that we go about reading research articles and journal articles to save you time and make sure that you're getting the most out of it. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up at Champion PT and Performance with Dave Tilly, Dan Pope, Lenny Macrina, Mike Scaduto, answering your very amazing questions. <laughs> <laughs> your amazing questions. <laughs> yeah, you are goofy today. It was a long weekend, bro. You should have seen him off camera. Uh, <laughs> uh, answering all your physical therapy, fitness, sports performance, business, health, Dan's beard, anything you guys want to talk about, we're here for you guys. Lenny, you have been in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> weeks. We, uh, we're, we, you know, you've done an amazing job introducing the students. I think Lenny has auditioned for and won the pay raise. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the American Idol competition of introducing the students, right? He does it better than me. So, Len, who do we have today well, joining Mike, us? Today we have Jan Conkle <laughs> from the New York Medical College Center of New York City University. Like my <laughs> we also have Leanne Cologne from Texas Women's University, which is a sister school of Texas Tech. a and A&M. A&M. And we also have Cameron McDonald. Come on down! We have I'm Drew excited. Carey. Come on, man. Oh, man. I think we're Pop Barker. What on earth took us 150 episodes <laughs> to get to this point in time? You're going to win a new car! <laughs> we, we're delusional in here. So we got another great question. We got one of these. We, get, we had one of those great one question episodes coming up. Who wants to take this one? Take of course it's Jan. I love it, Jan. Right? First up, thank yes. you. All right. Jan from the UK. Whoa. What's your technique for reading and gathering information from research articles and journals? It takes me 10 plus minutes to read one research article, and I want to speed up while still taking on board key points. I like, so So Jan or Jan? Ooh, whoa, Jan. it's from the UK, though. Yeah, well, it could be Jan. Okay. Right? I don't know what I meant. Does, the, U- <laughs> <laughs> no, does the UK exclude Jan? Do they pronounce their J's as Y? Well, no, like Jan, Jan is, a, is a more of a man's name, right? <coughs> and okay. Jan is more of a. What's the we thing don't know, like, short of Janet. Janet. Not until like two dots. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Jan's <laughs> short. Two dot thing. I think we've, we, we're off the rails. Yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> the, 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 the question was we are essentially how do we read research articles, not find research articles. That's why I really like this question. So the question, it's taken, it's taken Jan Yan about like 10 minutes to go through an article and figure it out. So I guess my first question in the group is, is that weird? Take it 10 minutes? I am not the person to answer this. Yeah, ten, I, don't, I don't think 10 minutes is necessarily bad for that. But um, so let's, Mike, you want to start? How do you read a journal article? All right, so I think I, had, I had tried to systemize this for myself and make it a, like kind of streamline how I think about reading a research article. So first thing I decide is, is this something that's directly uh, applicable to my clinical practice? Or is this something that I'm just kind of interested in reading? Is that Pico? Uh, I yeah, <laughs> I guess they toss this. I'm going to take full credit for developing this, but... Pico? Or, or this I'm, system? All right, I was like, right, so that's this is Pico. <laughs> this is the Pico <laughs> system. Is it applicable to my clinical practice? Uh, if it is, I, I plan to take a little more time. Then I read the research article. I say, okay, what, ha- what questions has this helped me answer? How can I apply this to a certain patient or a couple different patients that I work with? Um, how does this fit into my like understanding of the body of literature that's out there? Um, what kind of holes did it fill in, or what what's still missing? And then what do I need to look at um, outside of this research article to understand this a little bit better? I try and go through that. Um, it does take a lot of time, but I think it I think it helps with my understanding of of that specific article, and then putting it back into context of the, to- the totality to of what I know, essentially. That's awesome. In the research. I mean, I like the way you've, you, you've clearly thought about this, like, to say, like, hey, I'm not just reading an article, I'm trying to extract information. That's what I liked about that. So I think that's awesome that you do that. That's good. Who, who else wants to share how they do it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think similar to probably how we all do it is I always am trying to think, like, three or four major subjects I'm trying to look at, and you just all scan it first to 
look at the abstract for like the methods, the people involved, like for external validity, like I don't want to spend, you know, 10, 20 minutes reading a paper if I get to like the middle of it and it's like 60 year old, you know, males with back pain, I'm looking for a 15 year old female. Pico, I like that, that's, that's, that's good. So I'll try to look at the, like the main thoughts. I don't want to only read the abstract and like jump to conclusions, but if it just doesn't have the things that I'm looking for, then I'll probably skip it or put it on the back shelf. And then things that I'm really interested in, similar to Mike, is I'll look through the main methods first. I think that's probably the best place to start is to really take a look at how they measured it, what tools they used to be valid, the, the stats they use. And then if those things feel like they're valid, then I'll read the rest of the paper and go through like pretty in depth about their discussion conclusions. Then I usually do a lot of reference checking for their references to see like, where did they get this study from or what were they basing it on to kind of go back and read that study versus just take it from print salt. Yeah, and I think, I honestly, like piggybacking off Dave there, I mean, I think in reputable journals, there's a lot of bad journals out there nowadays, but in reputable journals, in the, me in the method section of the abstract, you should be able to get enough out of it if you think that this is, uh, the validity of yeah. the study is there a little bit. So, so I, do, I do, that is pretty important to me. You don't want to read like a bunch of the article and then look at the methods and then realize that you, know, <coughs> you somehow don't like something about their methodology and, and then the whole paper is, you know, invalid for you. But Len, what do you do? I know you read a lot. Yeah, I mean, kind of what they said, so nothing earth shattering. Um, definitely quickly abstract, see if there's something that's going to apply to me, something that's interesting to me, and then jump into the methods section because I think that's where you're going to figure out if the results are actually what they what they should be and what they are, are truly are. Um, for example, in the baseball world where I read a lot of stuff, I see a lot of, you know, trying to correlate range of motion and, and finding injury rates and GERD and all that. The paper just came out. And when I look at the method section of how they measure internal rotation and external rotation, completely disagreed with it, which means the whole data sheet, all the data that they had, to me, is not as valid as something that maybe we would have put out where we feel like <laughs> our methods, uh, how we measure range of motion is a little bit more true. We work with baseball players every day, all day, and so how we measure, we think, is a little better than somebody who doesn't stabilize correctly. So again, if the methods are not up to speed and up to par as what I would think they should be and what I've practiced and how I can apply it to my practice, then to me the results are going to be invalid. So. Yeah, I think yeah. adding on that to the challenge is that people aren't maliciously doing bad research oh, studies. Oh, definitely no. Yeah, I exactly. think the, the problem yeah. that, well, for the most some part, yeah, some right. people so, are. It's rare, yeah. but some people are. I think yeah. the, the <laughs> tough part is, is, as you guys who publish and we're starting to do more, it's like two years to get the whole process through so that by the time you publish something like you may be looking at something completely different because technology emerges and another example is I'm looking at a lot of like spec versus MRI scans for spine defractors and sometimes the technology advances so fast that you get to like the end of the, the diagnostic validity stuff and it's already there's something else they're using in the clinic so it's not going to be super applicable. It's not bad, it just it changes so fast. Yeah, yeah it changed. Dan, what do you do? Anything well, different? I think you guys did a great job of explaining most things. I think the one thing, and there's kind of maybe alluded to in the very beginning of the question, is that it's not a bad thing to spend more time learning. I think as a new grad, and I even, I, I get this all the time, like I'm kind of addicted to learning, so I feel like I need to learn more, 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 more. Next article, next article, there's so much stuff out there, I feel like I'm overwhelmed. What I find myself doing is that I will learn things on a more superficial level. So maybe I don't read it thoroughly enough, or go back and read it again, and really try to figure it out fully. And then what I find is like a couple years later, I forget, I just don't have the information anymore, which maybe I just didn't use it throughout the course of time, but I think there's nothing wrong with going through it very thoroughly to see all the pieces so that you actually remember some of this stuff. Right. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. Jan Yan in, uh, in was Great Britain, um, Taking only 10 minutes to do a paper, I, you probably should take a little longer if, if you really wanted to dive in. Sounds like you're disappointed that it's taking you 10 minutes, but I think it takes me a lot longer than 10 minutes. I to, read very slow. <laughs> it takes 10 I, hours, I feel I, like. I, no, I think there's a, t I, yeah, there's a time and a place for everything. I think that's, I think the other thing is maybe you got to just make sure that you're, you're reading the right articles too. So I, maybe I'll try to summarize and, and if I, as, as I summarize, I'll see if I have anything to add, but I think the first step for me is assuring that you're reading articles from quality journals. Because I think what Dave kind of brought up a little bit too, there's a lot of bad journals out there with bad research nowadays. Journals are now becoming uh, revenue sources. Yeah. So they, they're called predatory journals, but if you have to pay to get your, your, your publication published, right? And it happens on a, you know, there are some, you know, fees associated with it, but if you can pay and you can get it published in two weeks, that's a predatory journal that is, 
it, I, you just don't know the quality of it. They're they're just trying to publish things and make money. So it's 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 a it's a really challenge there. Stick to the top level journals. I think I am I am recommending that more and more now as I'm seeing more and more bad research. We love to talk about the bad research on Twitter when realistically we should just all stop reading those stupid journals. I think it's going to come down to stick to the top level journals. We've talked about it a million times on the podcast, so look for past episodes. Then scan the titles, right? Look for a title that may be applicable to you. But then you have to look at the abstract and make sure that the topic fits the patient population that you want. And that's what I think it's been said a few times. But it goes, is this title interesting? Great. Does this topic relate to the people I work with as well? And then from there, you go through the methodology, make sure you think there's good internal, external validity, that sort of stuff, and then go through it. So uh, I think you can spend a minute or two on a lot of articles that you used to spend 10 minutes on because you exclude them faster from you dig digging in. So that way you can look at one that's a little bit more reputable for 15, 20 minutes. And I think that's kind of, you know, the process I would do. One other tip, and I know this is kind of silly, but I started, you know, I, I, I think Dave motivated me. I mean, look at this. Okay. I'll show, I mean, this is Dave's desk right now. This is just a book. That's a good book. This is Dave's desk right now. I mean, this man's, <laughs> this man's book. bananas. This is, I, it's like every page. You know what I mean? So Dave's a madman, which I love, and I think we all love and respect that of Dave, but he goes in and he highlights, he takes notes, he takes his time with that. So I actually started, to, I was motivated motivated by Dave, and I've been doing that a little bit more lately, but the same thing, I will look at, I will look at table of contents, and I will look at abstracts of probably dozens to hundreds of articles, but I'll only dig in deep on maybe two, three, four a month. And I think that's, you know, that's the difference. I started doing it with my iPad with the pencil, with the Apple mm-hmm. pencil, just because it's like freaking magical. I don't know. There's something pleasant about the experience of it. And it saves it all right there. And you can just like pull them up. Like, I should just, probably save the trees and do that. Oh, MG, you would love it. You would go bananas <laughs> in there. But, but anyway, I think that would be my tip. So I don't, I, I think, I, I think, I think it's about putting it all together. I think that's like the, the, the big thing. So tons of great tips, great episode, great question. I appreciate that one. Thanks so much. If you have other great questions like this, head to MikeRinald.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill up the form to ask us questions. And then head on over to iTunes and subscribe to this podcast, rate and review us. We read all those reviews. We take criticism and, and, and try to you know put that feedback into improving the episodes. So thanks so much for listening and watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.